So Isaiah is saying unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. When he says a son, our mind races to Genesis. So he is repeating by prophecy the promise that God made. The government shall be upon where? His shoulder. And if the government shall be upon his shoulder, this is the seed that will crush the head of the serpent. Whoever will carry the government on his shoulder will be the seed that will put an end to the serpent. Now, the word father everlasting father that word father is not in the hebrew if you check the hebrew lexicon you won't see the word everlasting father you will only see everlasting but it is assumed because it is the same promise the promise of a son has with it the promise of a father eh? the promise of a son has with it the promise of a father. Can you have a son without a father? Hey, Power City, can you have a son without a father? Okay, so the promise of El Shaddai. Oh, listen to me, everybody. The promise of El Shaddai, who as God is father, who as God is son, who as God is spirit, the almighty, I am what I am, I will be what I will be. So the word everlasting here is the Hebrew word uh, aid, A-D. It means on and on. It means now and after. And don't forget that in Exodus 6, when Moses went to Egypt to deliver Israel, God said, the promise which I made to the fathers, the promise which I swore to Abraham, I look at it, Exodus 6, 8. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it to you for an heritage. I am the Lord, which I promise, I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. You will also see it repeated in Exodus 6, verse 3. So therefore... Pay attention to some crucial details as I bring this class to a climax. What we are finding is, if God is almighty, I had never heard. So, what we are finding out is, if God is almighty, then he will be father, he will be son, and he will be spirit. Almighty should be able to be whatever he wants to be. Of course, except he's not almighty. If he's almighty, he has the capacity as almighty to be son, to be spirit, and to be father at the same time. That's the meaning of the word almighty. If he is almighty, he will be everything we need in redemption. Remember, he said, I am sufficient. Huh? Huh? Uh, Hey guys, look at me. If somebody walked into this church and said, Hey, ladies and gentlemen in Power City, I am sufficient. I want to supply everything every one of you require. Make a list of how much you need quickly and send it across. I have the resources to supply. Okay? And you know his worth in the global economy. And every one of you writes how much you need. And he begins to dole out checks. He is not giving you because of you. He is giving you because of him. When God says I will do something. He is not waiting for anybody else. He is self-sufficient. So if he is self-sufficient. And he needs a man that is sinless to die. He will be the man. If he is self-sufficient. And he needs a spirit that can live in everybody at the same time. He will be the spirit. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Because if he's self-sufficient, it means when he moves, he moves with all the resources that makes him what he can be, when he wants to be, where he wants to be, how he wants to be. So when he wants to be a man, he removes what makes him God and keeps it secured. And then he puts on humanity. And he walks upon the earth, still having the ability to be the God that he is at the same time. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. And if he wants to be spirit, he has the capacity to see it and then transform form into spirit and enter everybody. That's why it's called almighty. The self-sufficient one. The double-breasted God. He doesn't depend on you to get resources for help. No, he does not need help. The self-sufficient God cannot look for help from a man that is broke. He will depend on you to be the man that will die. Because he's self-sufficient, he will be the man that will die. And he will be the man that will rise. 
That's why I can say, I lay down my life by myself. I pick it up by myself. I don't. So when he showed up upon the face of the earth and they said, are you the king of the Jews? He said, you have said so. He said, I have the power to take away your life. He said, hold it, hold it, hold it. You're going too far. You, I, you cannot take my life unless I permit you. I have power to lay down my life. I have power to raise it up. Why? I am the almighty Shaddai, the self-sufficient one. I thought somebody will shout glory. He's God all by himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he is the begotten son. If he's almighty, he should be father and son at the same time. Am I teaching? Am I teaching? If he is almighty, he will be everything he needs in redemption. He will be. If he's almighty, he is the I am that I am. He is the I will be what I will be. And then Moses tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Why, why, why am I laughing in this? Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. How many lords? How many God? I tell, I, I, tell, I, I tell people, Jesus is God. How can you say Jesus is God? If Jesus is God, why did he say, pray our father? Illiteracy can undress you in public. If he is the almighty, he will be what he will be. Because he is what he is. That's why we teach you that the trinity is a concept of redemption. So if he will be the redeemer of man, every resource he will need to redeem man is within him. If he needs to be a man to redeem man, he has the ability to be a man to redeem man. If he has to be spirit to live inside men, he has the ability to be spirit to live inside men. It is still one God. One God, but having the resources that he requires to redeem man from his predicaments. Here, O Israel, our, our God is one Lord. We know that there are no gods. We have only one God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 8, 4. How be it? There is not in every man this knowledge. Moses told them our God is he is the Eckhart. He will fulfill what he has said in humanity. And in fulfilling it, he will give birth to a new creation. He will give birth to what? A new creation. Sakoladaba. Remember, David is that king who knew that he was not the king. That's why David will say, the Lord said to my Lord. The Lord said to my Lord. <laughs> Covenant city. David acknowledged a king that was bigger than him. Sit on my right hand until I make. You know, Jesus asked them. David in the spirit called him Lord. If David is his father, why does David call him Lord? And they could not answer. Bible says from that day, nobody asked him any more questions. They permanently shut up. Because ah, they were busy bragging. He <laughs> said, okay. David in the spirit called him Lord. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, if he is David's son, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. They knew him as son of David. Okay? So, if I am son of David, and all of you are looking at me as the son of David, why does David in the spirit call me my Lord? The Bible said they kept quiet from that day. What Jesus was telling them is, I am before David. Before the ancestors of David I have been. Before Abraham, I am. So, even Abraham, I predated him. Before Adam and Eve, I am. So Jesus is the I am. When Moses say, who are you? What should I tell them? Who should I say send me? Tell them, I am that I am. Then Jesus walked on the earth and he said, before Abraham was, I am. So, you know what they understood? That's why they took stones to stone Jesus. What they understood is that, so you are the one that appeared to Moses as God. So you like this, you are the God. They carry stone. But that's who he is. He is the I am. There is no I am outside Jesus. Jesus is God Almighty. Anybody that doesn't believe that is not a Christian. He's not a Christian. He's in another religion that uses Bible. But if you're going to be a real Christian, then Jesus is God. And outside Jesus, there is no God. Hallelujah. He is the I am. He is the I am. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Yeah. I am that I am. I will be what I will be. And see him traveling through Abraham, through Adam and Eve promises walking through exodus down to establish his fatherhood and produce a family for jesus to produce for god almighty to produce a family god became son 
Remember, he is both father and son. The almighty. <laughs> Woo! You know why I laugh like that? Religious demons are vomiting already. They can't stand what I just said. God is both God, father and son. He is the father, he is the son. They are not two people. Have you forgotten he is the almighty? I am what I am. I will be. He said they knew me by this name. But, but by this name they knew me not. Why do you think Moses kept crying? Oh God, I want to see your face. Show me your face. What Moses was asking is, I want to see the incarnation. I want to see the visible appearance of God. And God told him, no, you can't see me now. And then the King James says, no man will see me and live. No, the original say, when you see me, you will live. But you can't see me now. But once you see me, you will live. That's what he means. That's the original Hebrew lexicon. But the King James, because of syntax problem, said, nobody, the day you see me, you die. No. It is when you see me, you live. Because there's no death in him. There's only life in him. When you see him, you live. And at the incarnation, God became a man. And he was born. He walked upon the face of the earth. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. When he moved, it was God walking on earth in humanity. And then he died. But I have news for you. Before he died, he spoke about his death. Before he died, he told you the program. He laid out for you the schedule, the, the program, the plan, and all that will happen through the mouth of the prophets and through the drama and the typology of Moses. He kept dramatizing, showing you what was going to happen. So when he was about to die, he was not afraid to die. And he didn't need help for resurrection. Because within him, is the sufficiency to rise. He died according to the scripture. He rose according to the scripture. He ascended according to the scripture. He seated today according to the scripture. And I have news for you in his resurrection. He brought many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. If you believe that, stand on your feet and shout glory. And today, as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become what? The sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. And brother Paul will say, I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That dream of God having a family became a reality in God being the son. That dream of God having a family became a reality in God being the son. And in his son, he produced his family. And he now wanted to live inside his sons. I will live in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God. They will be my sons and my daughters. So in order for that to come to pass, the son became the spirit. I am what I am. I will be what I will be to fulfill my purpose. So if I have to be a son, I God will be the son. If I have to be a spirit, I God will be the spirit. But I am sufficient. I'm not depending on anybody to make it happen. All that I need is inside me. I have son inside me. I have spirit inside me. I have father inside me. And today he has brought many sons. And those sons are standing in this building. Where are the sons? Where are the Where's the family of God? Go ahead and give him a praise in the building. Go ahead and give him a praise in the building.